Hey. How are you feeling this fight week? Oh, I'm feeling great. Uh, you know, I fought not too long ago, June 10th at uh, UFC Vancouver, and uh, you know, just right back into training camp. I felt great. Did you like that quick turnaround? Did you feel like you needed a quick turnaround, or would you have preferred to have a little bit more time? No, I love the, the quick turnaround. I mean, this will be my, my third fight this year, and uh, I feel like it's even easier for me just to, stri just to stay in training camp, you know, continue to build on, on my skills and stuff. But, yeah, having, having a long kind of time off between fights, I really don't like that. So this, is, this has been great. How important was that win for you? I know you had the draw and then you had some losses. How important was that for your mentality to get that win? Uh, it was great. You know, I mean, as far as my mentality, I was, I was comfortable with the, the Korean Superboy fight. Again, I felt like I won that fight. I was able to, you know, sleep at night and stuff. Uh, even with the Jai Herbert fight last year in London, I mean, I went back and watched it a bunch of times. And, I mean, there's nothing I could do about what the judges do. Um, so I was, I was comfortable with my performance and my preparation and stuff. Obviously, we've, you know, built on the you know, the training camp and, and my skill set since then. But um, all my, my last few fights. Do you ever have to consider, I mean, you're going to be fighting somebody uh, Hispanic, um, I think, believe he's from Mexico, and this is a, a Hispanic card. There's going to be a lot of people cheering for that uh, fighter. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about having to kind of walk into en enemy territory a little bit there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I fought on UFC Mexico against a, a Mexican fighter in Polo Reyes. So I walked out to probably the most Mexican crowd you can get, you know, and, and they were all, you know, cheering for my opponent and, and booing me and stuff. But, uh, you know, what I found is once I got in the octagon and, and I finished Polo pretty early on, then I, I won over all the Mexican fans. I think, uh, you know, I think they're big combat sports fans and they, they appreciate people that go out and put on a show and, and you know, really fight. So I think uh, even though I may not be their, uh, they may not be my fans right now, after the fight, they're definitely going to be, you know, Kyle Nelson fans. What are your thoughts on your opponent? What sort of fight are you expecting from him? I'm ex expecting a good fight. I mean, he's a young guy, uh, you know, he's aggressive, tall, long, good boxing, good jiu-jitsu. So I think it's a great matchup. I think, uh, I think we, we pair up well, you know, in a lot of that stuff. I think my Muay Thai is a little bit better than his, his boxing. I think my wrestling and jits is a little bit better than his jits. But, uh, you know, him being young and hungry and, and, you know, just getting into the UFC, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to make for a good matchup. And last question for me. I know you said you'd like that quick turnaround. Do you think that maybe you'll fight again one more time this year? Or is that the goal? So I would like to fight in December unless the UFC comes to Canada in January. So we'll see, um, see what happens with that. But, yeah, I'd love to, again, get another turnaround, you know, three or four months. Um, and, yeah, I mean, obviously Canada would, would be preferable. But if they're not going to come, then, yeah, I'd like to fight again in December. Thank you. Hey, Kyle, right back here. Yeah. Um, you shared on Instagram a few days ago a picture of you reading to your boys, obviously both very young. Um, as they get older and they can understand more about your job, what fight are you most excited about sharing with them when they get older? I think as they learn to understand what I do for a living, it's not even going to necessarily be one of my performances uh, that I would look forward to share with them the most. I think it'd be kind of the hard work and the perseverance uh, that I've put into, you know, my career. It's, you know, it's one thing to see kind of what I do in the cage for whatever, 10, 15 minutes, but, uh, you know, they're going to get to be behind the scenes and, and a part of a lot of my training camps and see how hard I work. And, and if I can instill some of that work ethic and, you know, the ability to come o overcome adversity and stuff like that in them, I'd, I'd much prefer them learn that from me than, uh, you know, just be excited that, oh, hey, my dad's on TV. Uh, you touched on it, obviously, fighting, you know, Mexican on Mexican Independence Day. Uh, do you feel, is there any time where you feel a little spoiled? Like, obviously, the last fight, you're at home in Canada, and now, you know, obviously, it's a very different thing. Is it a little difficult to be like, well, I couldn't get used to that feeling, you know what I mean? It was definitely a good feeling, you know, walking out in UFC Vancouver with all the Canadian fans there. But it's, uh, I mean, it was, I take it as, uh, you know, like a treat. It was awesome, but now it's back to work, you know. I'm, I'm from Canada. I'm generally always the away guy, whether I'm fighting in Mexico or the States or England. Uh, I'm always going to be the away guy, so that's, uh, that's what I'm comfortable with. Um, one final one. Obviously, Yasmin Yezdevici is also on the card, both Canadians, both fighting Mexicans. Has there been anything at the hotel, any fist bumps saying, hey, 
we got this together for the North. Uh, I actually haven't seen her this week yet, but I saw her last week, you know, at training. Uh, you know, we get to train together a bit uh, up in Canada. Uh, but I saw one of her coaches today, so I got to talk with them and stuff. But, yeah, I definitely think, uh, you know, we've both had a great training camp for this fight, and I think we're both going to put on great shows. Thank you. Kyle, um, do you think the experience fighting in Mexico is going to help you in any way for this event since it's going to be, you know, very Mexican heavy as far as, like, the crowd? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's always different going into somebody else's hometown. Uh, the same with England and stuff and and hearing the, you know, the booze and all that stuff. But it was definitely kind of something refreshing in Mexico when, you know, I was able to win over the crowd. And they did appreciate, you know, a good performance and a, and a good fight. I think there's there's maybe crowds in certain areas where you could go and you could put on the best fight ever. But if you beat their hometown guy, they're going to hate you no matter what. Whereas I feel like the Mexican fans there, they appreciate combat sports, you know, with a, you know, a long history of boxing and, and stuff like that. I think they, um, you know, they're not going to be biased towards me after the fight. You know, if I put on a good fight, an honorable fight, then I think I'll win a lot of them over. Is there any mental preparation or anything you need to be aware of when fighting with the crowd against you? No, uh, I think I went through that preparation earlier on in my career. Again, always being the away guy. And now, you know, I'm so strong mentally that it's, it's not even necessarily something I have to, you know, visualize or go through or anything. I've already got that locked in. And I don't know if you've realized this, but um, I know if you fought in the Apex before, but generally, like, you're fighting in pretty big events with big crowds, right? Like, that's kind of been the story of your career. And sometimes we hear, like, fighters say, like, oh, you know, I want to feel the crowd. I don't want to fight in the Apex anymore. Have you noticed that? Like, you, you've kind of, and I guess, I guess in a way, been lucky that, like, you've been able to be part of, like, these uh, big events in, in big arenas? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was it was interesting to fight at the Apex, and it, it's cool because you can hear your, your corner so well and... It's uh, definitely a different experience, and I enjoyed it while it happened. But, uh, I mean, there's something different about having the crowd there. Whether they're, you know, your hometown crowd or an away crowd, having the people there definitely does give you, you know, a certain amount of energy. Thank you. Carl, over here. You mentioned there you're coming off a win at UFC 289 in front of an electric Canadian crowd. As a Canadian fighter yourself, what's it like witnessing this uh, influx of talent coming out of Canada and what can, ex what can we expect in the next coming years from Canada mixed martial arts? Yeah, I definitely think, you know, MMA in Canada is on the rise. And obviously UFC Vancouver was a great statement for that. I mean, we went, all the Canadians went undefeated. You know, we put on a great show. We had, again, fans from all over Canada come out to BC. And I know they're, they're hungry for more events. So, I mean, the more events the UFC does there, the more kind of um, attention we get as, as Canadian fighters. And the more it kind of, you know, fills gyms and builds, you know, the next uh, round of talent. So... I think, you know, with guys like me, you know, Mike Malott, Charles Jourdain, Gavin Tucker, I mean, we've got so many high-level guys, and I think with the UFC, you know, being back in Canada, it's going to put a little bit more of a spotlight on us, and you're going to see, uh, you know, an even bigger explosion of Canadian MMA. you have a message for those watching from back home? Yeah, I mean, make sure you turn in September 16th. Uh, I'm going to be representing Canada, and, uh, you know, I'm going to put on a good show for you guys. Thank you.